Principles of Basic Staining Staining enhances the contrast of a cell and helps one to better visualize the specimen and see various structures. But what is a stain? A stain is a solution consisting of a color agent or dye known as a chromophore and a solvent, a solution in which the dye is dissolved. The color agent or chromophore in a stain is a charged ion and the charge of the chromophore dictates the type of stain. In a basic stain, the chromophore is positively charged ion. The positive charge of the dye will be attracted by the negative charge of the cell and the chromophore will pass through the cell's membrane, staining the specimen. On the other hand, in an acidic stain, the chromophore is negatively charged. The negative charge of the cell will prevent the dye from entering the specimen, thus the chromophore remains outside of the specimen and stains the background. There are three main categories for staining, simple, differential, and special stains. In a simple stain, only one stain is used. The process has few steps and doesn't require much time. Therefore, it's simple compared to other staining methods. There are two types of simple staining techniques, direct stain and negative stain. In a direct stain, a basic stain is used. Remember from our previous slides, a basic stain has a positively charged chromophore. Thus, the specimen will be stained in a direct stain. In order to perform a direct stain, the specimen must first be fixed to a slide, so it will remain on the slide during the staining process. A direct stain is also referred to as a positive stain. Methylene blue is a commonly used direct stain. On the other hand, negative stains use an acidic type stain, such as nigrosin. Recall that acidic stains have negatively charged chromophores, Thus, in a negative stain, the background is colored, not the specimen. Negative stains are often used for delicate specimens due to the fact you do not have to fix the specimen to the slide in the staining procedure. Here are examples of simple stains. Notice in the negative stain image, the background has retained the dark color of the stain, whereas the bacteria is still lighter and unstained. In the direct stains, the specimens have picked up the stain and become colored. The background remains lighter and unstained. Differential staining techniques require two or more stains and have several steps to complete. Differential staining allows one to differentiate between specific cell characteristics. In bacteria, differential stains are commonly used to determine the cell wall structure. Two commonly used differential staining processes for bacteria are gram stain and acid fast stain. Both are used for identifying cell wall characteristics. Here are examples of differential stains. The first slide demonstrates a gram stain. On the slide are two species of bacteria, one which is a gram positive and stains dark purple, the other a gram negative which stained pink. In the second image, a giant cell within the lungs contains numerous acid-fast bacteria. You can see the bacterial cells are they, as they are stained pink against the blue stain of the lung tissue. Special stains are used to distinguish particular structures on cells, such as the presence of a capsule or flagella. Special stains require several steps and can get quite complicated. However, they are great for helping with identification of a microbe. Here are two examples of special staining techniques. The first is an endospore stain, and the second is a stain for flagella. So in conclusion, we must remember there are many staining techniques one can use. You just need to know what is the objective of the staining the specimen. All staining techniques help us better visualize the cell or a particular structure within the cell thus providing us with information to better identify the microbe.